today we're going to be taking a look at this, the Mario 5 frame from Speedy B. Now this is one of their new 5 inch quad frames and what we're going to do in this video is give you an overview of what the frame is like, put it together and just share with you some observations as we move through. Now just to be clear, I am not going to be flying this frame in this video, it is more going to be a bench overview, call it a review or not a review, that's entirely down to you. What I'm going to try and do is show you the frame, put it together and just give you some observations based on that. Now just to be clear, Speedy B did send me this frame for free, however they have not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so when you get the frame kit, it comes like this. Now we have the Mario 5 frame kit DC Lite, so that's the dead cat version. And then I've also been sent this little kit, which they're calling the Upgrade Kit A. I don't actually know if this comes included. We'll take a look at that on their website a little bit more later on. Now, the usual Speedy B frames would come in a box, but this one's come in this little padded bag. That's not actually a bad thing. It's always good to save the environment a little bit, and hopefully that's what they're trying to do here. Now, obviously, when you open it up, we don't need that. Everything comes like you see here. So all of the frame parts, the carbon fiber bits, come sealed like this. So we've got our four arms, and then we've got our plates, which is our top, bottom, and mid plate. We've then got this bag of accessories. In this, we have... Just open it all out. And Speedy B usually do a really good job of this. You've got this leaflet which has a QR code which will take you to the instructions. We'll need that to put it together. We've then got bags of screws, not labelled in size. Okay, interesting. But the instructions hopefully will tell us what we need. I would have liked to have seen sizing on that. There's also some, they're not 3D printed, they're moulded plastic parts. So that's some standoffs for the legs. We've got our silicon mounts for our camera up front as well as a little clear piece of plastic there, not sure what that is. Our aluminium standoffs for the front of our frame. Our standoffs, more standoffs, and then the frame parts itself. Now what is interesting is, what I'm not seeing here is those sort of goldy bits and looking in this kit, I'm seeing them there. So in this kit, if we open that up, we then have the additional parts. Okay, that's sealed. Get into that. They must be including this as standard just as a separate, I guess. We have the TPU pieces, which is nice to see. XT60. An antenna, which is a, a UFL to SMA. Okay, our bolt for our GoPro mount. Not sure what that is. And then the two gold bits that I've seen on the images for the frame. So, what we're going to do next is get these open and give you an idea of the thickness of some of these parts. Because, as with all frames, what we want to try and understand is how thick the carbon is, how strong it is, what that is like compared to others on the market. So, we've got them, and then we'll get the arms. The arms are thick, that I can tell you. Okay, so starting with what looks to be the top or bottom plate, I'm not sure which one is which. I would need to see the instructions, but I'm going to suggest that's the top plate a minute. That is made of 2.4 mil carbon fibre, probably 2.5 to 4 mil in. The mid plate is made of 1.94 mil carbon fiber. And then what's most likely the bottom back plate is 2.49 to 2.5 mil carbon fiber. We then have the arms. They are thick and they are coming in at six mil. They are very chunky compared to the other parts of the frame. A lot more chunky than what we usually see actually. And then what you can see is we have the motor mount there with the section cut out there for the screw. And then there's this little additional diamond bit on the end that the plastic pieces will go into for the protection. That should offer a bit more protection for the motors in the event of a crash. I do wonder how strong that would be. What's good is that does stick out quite a long way from the motor, so that should offer decent protection. But I'm just not sure how that's going to be in a crash. Is that going to crash in? possibly in a very big off, but I'll be honest, 
I'm not convinced frames like this are absolutely designed for out and out bando flying. Many of these frames are really cinematic O3 style frames rather than out and out bando crashes. Now, if we scan this QR code, that takes us to speedyb.com and hopefully that is going to give us the manual for the frame. There we go. Mario 5 frame. We've then got the English manual and the 3D print files. It's nice to see that they have 3D print files available. That takes you straight to the download. We'll take a look at that on my PC a bit more later on. And then if you click on that, it takes us straight to the on-screen manual, which shows us the order of everything for putting together. So what I'm going to do next is assemble this frame and then I'll come back and share with you some thoughts once I've done that. Okay, now just before I start really putting this together, I've just spotted something rather interesting about the design that I thought I'd show you. You have these two arms that go together with these two sections that are cut out down 50% of the carbon and they sort of lock together like this. As this is a dead cap frame, we do have it different from the front to the back. But you then also have these vertical carbon fibre pieces that go into there, that seem to just sit like that between the front and back legs, just to offer some more stability. And then we have our top mount for the frame that would go on like this here, over the top of that plate that will hold everything in place. Now this pocket that's left in the middle of these stability braces can be used. SpeedyB actually show on their website you putting your capacitor in there. So it's just another nice little cubby hole that you can cram a component into. Quite unusual with what they've done, but I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. It's nice to see them thinking outside the box with regards to some component placement. Okay, now I've got it to this point here. Now it's a bit of a strange setup. You have this bottom plate and then you have this mid plate that overlap on the back here. And you can see if I go like that, you've got the two pieces. And then you have this 3D printed piece that goes in there. This has an antenna mount on it. Not really sure why the setup's quite like this. Bit unusual, I will say, but it is what it is. So what we're going to do next is continue with the build. We'll get everything fitted and then I'll show you what it's like when it's done. Okay, so I've stopped at this point here just to give you some sizing information with regards to what you can fit in the back, what flight stack sizing we've got, as well as cable lengths for your cameras and things like that. So, with regards to ear units and things like that, cable length wise, to the camera up front, you're going to need about 116 to 120 right to the front. Pretty much most cameras should go in this okay. If I just grab myself an O3 ear unit, this is my bench test one. That fits in there absolutely fine. And you can see we've got plenty of cable length on the standard cable all the way up front. This is one I'm just repairing the camera on right now. And you can see that that fits in no problem at all. As the O3 will fit in, that should be the case for most of the other digital FPV systems. There is still plenty of space around the back, so you're gonna get in the Cadex VTXs without too many problems at all, as well as things like the new HD0 Freestyle version 2 and the new Moonlight from Cadex. Just to give you an idea with Avatar HD, here is the new version 2 VTX, that fits in fine. And this is that new Moonlight camera on here. That's the 4K camera, obviously designed to be used with the Moonlight VTX but that fits in no problems at all. I've got a very short cable on this one. This is a test cable. The normal cable will fit absolutely fine. Now, with regards to the camera width, you can fit in a 19 or a 20 mil. The silicon dampers or isolators that they've included are actually two different widths. So if you put them in one way, like we've got here, the thicker section on the inside, it'll take a 19 mil camera. And then if you flip it over to the thinner section, it'll then take a 20. So that means you can install both the DJI camera as well as the 19 mil cameras from the likes of Cadex and your traditional camera in there. Let me just... Uh, get that in there we go so you can see there it's a bit thinner so you've got the option for both no problem at all finally with regards to the flight stack you've got 30 by 30 mounting and then if we take a look at the height to the top of the standoffs if we go from there to there you're talking 21 mil basically 20 mil height between the plates 
Okay, so the build is complete. Just to show you around how it looks, we've got all of our TPU pieces fitted. So up front, we've got our GoPro mount, which is integrated into the frame. There's an actual cutout here for it. Regardless if you want that or not, you're gonna need that installed because it's actually a part of the frame. You could remove it because there are standoffs that go through the middle, but then you're gonna have a gaping hole that you're gonna need to fill. You then have those silicon isolators on the front that will fall out if you're not careful for your camera. And then you've got that little bumper on the front there and then we've got the TPU pieces on the back our antenna holder between those two plates and then we've got this one here which holds our XT60 and a single antenna connector there are other printable pieces available that you can get as well and there's a link to them on the SpeedyB website you then have a little cable cut out in this one here if you want to bring your power cable through but obviously we have our XT60 up back. As I showed earlier we do have 19mm or 20mm camera mounts so it's going to be absolutely fine with DJI 03. This is the dead cat frame so it's going to keep those props out of view as well. They do include with this frame the little battery grip which is nice to see and then if I flip it over to the bottom you can see we've got that little plastic piece there which I installed. Bit weird you can install it there or there. You only get one though. Ideally you would have wanted two but there is one included and that then just covers that little hole and as I showed earlier there's plenty of room up back for DJI 03, Avatar HD, HD0, all of the usual DJI systems. Now with regards to rigidity this frame does feel really quite solid as I showed earlier it has those 6mm arms which is really good and there is a bit of bling on this frame if you look around the front here you've got these little ear ducts so if I show you there it's going to channel ear down the side not really sure of what the purpose of them is however they are included so we did fit them now this new mario frame is a lot shorter than the last frame that we had from speedy b which was the master 5 version 2 the master 5 there was actually two versions there's this one here i think this is the v1 and then they had the v2 as well if i just compare the two it is a much shorter frame overall a lot more like that original frame speedy b released i can't remember the part number of it off the top of my head if i just put them side by side underneath and then flip them over you can see there is a dramatic difference in length the good thing about that is with this frame you're not going to need any longer cables for using your digital vtx's i think overall it's a nice frame as i've said there are a few bits i think that don't 100 percent make sense on this like these little bling bits up here but if you're looking for a nice frame for your DJI 03 system, it's definitely going to be worth a look. Okay, so just to share with you some observations and thoughts on the Mario 5 from Speedy B. I think it's a nice frame. It's nice to see that they've gone back to that more shorter frame. It's got really nice thick arms and it's going to have no problems accommodating any of the digital FPV systems. We've got an isolated camera mount up front, aluminium front end and a built-in GoPro mount. I do think though it's a bit of a complicated frame or sort of overcomplicated in some ways you've got that gopro mount which is part of the frame and i preferred that just to have been on top and then you have all of this extra bling at the back with this rather sort of complicated two plate setup at the rear which i'm just not sure what benefit that brings it's really nice that it's got good solid thick arms six mil and the frame overall is really nice and solid but it is more of a cinematic 03 frame than it is an out and out bando basher just a couple of other observations is that there was no battery strap included with this kit you usually do with speedy b also the screw lengths were not put on the bags so you did have to spend a bit of time messing around overall i do think it's a nice frame but there are some things i feel are done for more bling than actually out and out functionality purposes now price wise this frame is one of the cheaper frames we've seen release onto the market in recent times for instance the basic frame that i showed you here today is available for just under 34 dollars you then have an advanced version of this frame which is the frame with that separate bag kit that i showed you that has all of the extra accessories and that comes in at 39.99 you can though buy the frame on its own for 33.99 and you can buy that upgrade kit available separately for ten dollars there's then also the x version of the frame available again for $33.99 for the basic frame or the advanced version with all of those extra accessories including the gopro mounts available for $39.99 now my only other comment I want to make and it isn't really specific to this frame but it is across the board is that we're seeing many manufacturers push out new frames every 6 to 12 months and whilst that's all very well we are starting to see things like parts for their earlier frames fall to the wayside. I have 
the Speedy B early frame, which is the F, I can't remember what it's called, I'll put an image of it up on the screen. And whilst that has been a phenomenal frame, unfortunately, parts for it are no longer available on the Speedy B website. The Master 5 had a version 1 and a version 2, and now we've got the Mario 5. And whilst these are all good frames, I do think Speedy B, as well as many of the manufacturers, need to do a better job of making parts available for their older frames. People are going to break these, and even if you make the frame end of life, we need to still see arms and other parts be available, especially when you're making frames like this that have very custom components. As I mentioned, this isn't specific to Speedy B, but it is something I did want to highlight because it is a trend that we've started to see with many manufacturers making more and new and updated frames and leaving their old ones behind and then leaving users behind who have bought them. It's not ideal to have to replace the frame if you break an arm. You should be able to buy parts for your frames for at least three to five years in my opinion. Anyway, that's it for me on this one. If you're interested in getting yourself the Speedy B Mario 5, there will be a link to it in the description. As I've said, it is available for both a dead cat as well as a standard X version as well. I want to say a big thank you to Speedy B for sending this one over. We are going to be talking about a few other products from Speedy B in the near future, so if you're interested in seeing them, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Furthermore, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me. Please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.